say you think somebody might reasonably vote E. And this has changed what it means to, to respond. It doesn't mean you believe it. It means that you're actually a good student for coming up with an incorrect reason. The best part, I think, is when they go over why the wrong answers are wrong. You know, you think it's answer A, and you really think that that's why, you know, you've got a reason why you, you chose answer A. And they're like, okay, well, answer is C, moving on. You're like, well, I don't understand why my, my, my answer was wrong. One of the best ways to learn is making a mistake or doing the wrong thing and learning why it was wrong. But what about the histogram of student responses? For the students, I think what is most rewarding is the feedback that they receive when the histogram is projected in real time. But when do you show this to the students? This prompt feedback helps students learn from their mistakes. But you can choose whether to show the histograms to the students immediately or to wait until after you talk about the question. This is an important part of the clicker question, and it depends on how the students voted. So when I have the histogram, there's many different outcomes, and the most common one is it's 90% correct. In this case, there are pros and cons to showing the histogram before having a whole class discussion. Either way, it's important to discuss the answer before moving on. Let's take a look at this. So there's a pretty strong agreement on um, E, none of the above, but I got some Bs and Cs. Um, B is very tempting. I, I like the B. Um, what's wrong with B? Pardon? It's not you, it's big R, it's just notational convention. Uh, as I've talked to students, they always come back and tell me they appreciate the fact that we still talk about the correct process even when over 90% of the students got the right answer. And I think that's important for instructors to know. What if about 70% of the students got it right? What might you do then? If it's 70-30, you know, you, you look at that histogram and you sort of think, oh, they all got it. But they sure as heck didn't. A third of the class did not get that question. That would probably be a, a time when I might not show the histogram. Keeping it hidden allows you to say, who can tell me a reason for B? And if you're voting B and it's wrong, you don't know that you're in the minority yet, and so you might get that voice. So the histogram is particularly important when the student 